My name is Dale Brown, and we're actually in the small studio room that we have here at Community Church. Over here on my left is Arlene, and straight ahead of me is Ted. They're here taping me today. Ted has said to me that the camera makes me look younger and better. That's not what I've heard before, Ted, so we're going to do the best we can with what we've got. But these guys are so faithful to their church. Thank you guys so much for all that you do. It's it's a pleasure to be with you all and with other persons in the life of our church as well. I invite you to join me as we think about worship today on this Sunday in June, which is Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday reminds us that we experience one God in three persons. That's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or we could say it in this way, Creator, redeemer sustainer these this experience of god is a wonderful experience i hope you know that god is there with you present at all times not to judge or condemn but to express love and grace and kindness to you it is such a thrill for me to get these opportunities to speak about god with this church and in all the things that we do God has been so good to me. Ted, we were talking earlier with Jack and Andrea about how blessed we are. We are a blessed, blessed people, and we're called to share and give in many ways. So congratulations on Trinity Sunday, and I welcome you in worship this day. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and ever live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Grant that we may always hold firmly and joyfully to this faith, may finally be one in you, who are three persons in one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to read to you today two portions of scripture. The first is our gospel reading from the 16th chapter of John, verses 12 through 15. And, and these uh, are words particularly suited for Trinity Sunday. This is Jesus talking to the disciples in the upper room. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Dear friends, that's the reading from the Gospel of John, and a reminder that the Holy Spirit is present with us after the ascension of Jesus so that he will remind us of who Jesus was, of how Jesus lived, of what Jesus said, and of our call to be disciples, to imitate, to be like Jesus in the way we live. Psalm 8 is a tremendous psalm. They all are good, some better maybe than others, but Psalm 8 is one of my very favorites. And let me read that to you at this time and talk with you for a few moments about it. O oh Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings, that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Dear friends, this is the Word of God 
for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love the Old Testament book of Psalms. It's one of those books that feeds my soul. Even sometimes when I don't know what my soul needs. And it's always a corrective to selfish prayers or to focusing on myself or to feeling as if I'm unloved or uncared for or unthought of. God speaks through the Old Testament book of Psalms as he does through the entire scripture. In this Psalm, Psalm 8, we are reminded of the greatness of God. And on this Trinity Sunday, we need to focus on God's greatness and awesomeness. Karl Barth was a Swiss pastor and theologian during the period of the Second World War. And they asked him about his learnings and his theology, and he was asked to sum up his beliefs and what he knew from years and years of study. His, his church dogmatics, Ted, I think, covers like 40 volumes. And he responded in this way. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. A wonderful learned man, a brilliant man, but one who had a very simple faith. Now, Bart wasn't perfect. There's a lot of things about him that are coming to light that cause us to question some things now, but not to judge him. But he also was a person who said that what we know about God the Creator in contrast to the awesomeness of God the Creator, our understanding we could fit in a little red wagon. But God is so much greater and bigger than that. So when I was growing up, I had a Western Flyer wagon. I think every kid maybe had or did. But it was not big enough to carry a lot of things, but it could carry some things. And I would tie it to my bike and I would carry my treasures behind my bike and sometimes it would flip over and sometimes roll. But what we understand about God as creator, as great, fits in that wagon. But God blows that wagon apart and is more wonderful than that. I like the stars. I like looking at the planets at night. I like astronomy. But I'm not good at it. We had an astronomy class at Eastern Mennonite University where I went to college, and it was at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, I'm, you know, 17, 18 at this time, and every time they turn up the planetarium and start talking about the stars and its locations and the Big Dipper and Little Dipper and Ursula Major and Ursula Minor, all of us in that camp, in that planetarium, all the guys at least, had a collective nap. I wish I had been awake during that. Because the stars are beautiful. And the science behind them is wonderful. And they are a tremendous reminder and reality of the greatness of God. The story is told of St. Francis, who would go outside and he would climb to the highest peak that he could find whether that was a, a man-made building or whether that was a natural reality. And of course, in Italy and in Europe at this time, there weren't the lights like we have the, you know, the, that, that kind of change things. We, we have lights in our parking lot and lights in our developments and, and such. And they make it harder to see the stars. But St. Francis, back in this period of time, would climb up to the, 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 uh, the highest point and he would just prayerfully watch the stars twinkle and the planets come and go and meteorites move across the sky and he would be reminded of the greatness and glory of God. The psalm says that you have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark. How majestic is your name in all the earth when I look at the heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars you have established what are human beings that you are mindful of them? God's glory is displayed in the natural world. 
I ask people a lot of times in Bible studies that I'm doing, what, how do you connect with God? How, how do you rest and recreate and renew your life? And most of them will say, I go out in nature. And here in Delmarva, here in Worcester County, we're blessed with a beautiful creation. The other day I was driving down the road and there was a blue heron walking beside the road. Or you hear the seagulls and you hear their call and you see the ducks and the geese and last night I started back walking after dealing with the gout and, and on my walk I ran into two bunnies. They didn't say anything but they looked me over and they must have thought I was okay because they didn't hop away. God as creator is an important concept for us to grasp. God has put this world into existence through all kinds of scientifically understood realities. But God spoke creation into being. And we trust and know that God is with creation, has not abandoned it, has not left it. But we also experience God in the small, right? For me, uh, one of the great seasons of the year is Christmas. I'm the type of person that if you give me a gift and you say, okay, Dale, hold this until Christmas morning, it is not going to happen. If I tell you that I will hold that gift until Christmas morning, I am lying to you. So I'm shaking that thing. I sometimes will peel the paper back and I'll look inside and see what the box says on, the, on, on, on it. Or maybe I'll just open it all up and just say, hey, I'm just going to give in. I'm weak. Let's do it. At Christmas, we experience God in the small. Jesus is born, the baby of Bethlehem. You know, in some ways, it would be nice if we could just leave Jesus at that location. However, he grows into a man. He lives and dies for us, and he rises again. So two persons in the life of the Trinity, of course, are God Creator, God Father, and Jesus Savior. Jesus gives his life for us. No one takes it from him. No one forces him to the cross. It's a huge act of violence, and, and I struggle with that act of violence because I know how sinful and wrong I am, and, and like the Apostle Paul, I can say there is no good thing in me were it not for Christ, the grace and love of God. So we experience God in those two persons, in God the Creator, in Jesus the Son, the Redeemer, the Savior. And, and, and we also experience God in a third person. Now, I'm a United Methodist. That means I often don't know what in the world to do with the Holy Spirit. You know, we think of the excesses of the Spirit, or we think of you know, it's, it's just a, it's the quiet, shy member of the Trinity. But let me tell you a couple of things I feel about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. I do dumb stuff all the time. I make mistakes. I say the wrong thing. I'm grumpy. I'm unkind. You know, I'm not a perfect person. I'm just a person. And don't laugh because you are too. The Holy Spirit reminds us that when we sin, we need to seek forgiveness. That sin separates us from God's love. And because sin separates us from God's love, we need that forgiveness, that grace that God can give. So one purpose of the Holy Spirit is to convict us. A second purpose of the Holy Spirit is to challenge us. You know, um, it's very easy to settle. It's very easy just to take what comes, to not worry about, you know, trying harder or doing better in relationship to life or to God. But the Holy Spirit challenges us to do things in the name of Christ. Many years ago, I was sitting in my home in Cambridge. Um, it was the parsonage for St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and. There was a disaster hurricane on Hooper's Island and down in the southern part of Dorchester County. And I can clearly know that while I had no experience in disaster relief or in management or leadership, that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this is your time, God wants you to do this. I did it, I said yes. I stepped out of that comfort zone, I risked it and I'm so thankful I did. 
I got to help a lot of people, but I grew immensely because of what um, God has done in my life during that time. It was some of the best 13 years that I ever experienced. I learned and grew in terms of helping, but even more so in terms of God's presence. I watched people who had lost everything to storms say, so, you know, it could have been worse. Nobody died. Nobody was harmed. Everybody's all right. And that inspired me to really look at how I view the possessions that I have, the stuff that I have. It's great, but it's just not something to grasp and hold on to. The Holy Spirit challenges us to do great things for God. The final thing I think is that um, the Holy Spirit reminds us of God's presence. It's God present with us. Uh, Jesus reminds us, for lo, I am with you always, even into the ends of the earth. And God is present at all times and all places. And as we think about that reality, it's, it's a wonderful gift. My father had a version of the Bible called the J.B. Phillips Bible. It was a translation or a paraphrase, and he loved that. He read the cover off of it. J.B. Phillips wrote another book entitled, Your God is Too Small. And he said, so often we picture God as some eternal police officer. And no offense meant to our police, they're wonderful. But God is an eternal police officer watching to catch us in some wrongdoing. So I often th know that people think of God as like a speed trap. We're going through life, we're having fun, we're doing all these things, then all of a sudden something bad happens. And it's like God took away our fun, took away our joy. Instead, what we need to think of is the Jesus who celebrated with us, who laughed with children, who took fish and bread and multiplied it so everybody could eat, who was a person who loved life and lived life to its fullest. God is not a police officer. God celebrates and laughs when we celebrate and laugh. God is also one who is broken hearted and filled with sorrow when that tumbles into our lives as well. God doesn't send those things. They're a part of life and living, but also know that God is with us at all times, not to judge, not to condemn, but just to love us, to care about us, to be our very, very best friend. There is no better friend than God, than the person of Jesus. So let me go back to what I start, said at the very beginning. What are some images of the Trinity that help us to understand that it's one God in three expressions of that faith? Let me give you two. Actually three. Clover. Everybody's looking for the four-leaf clover. There's even a song about that, right, Ted? And in the three-leaf clover, you have all one plant, Father, Son, Spirit. The pretzel with the three holes are openings, Father, Son, Spirit. Water, ice, and steam, Father, Son, Spirit. All the same, all the same molecular structure, I think. I'm not an expert, but all the same thing. Father, Son, Spirit are not three separate gods. They're all one God expressed completely and fully through the Trinity. So congratulations on Trinity Sunday. It is a wonderful, awesome, great day. Because we talk about the bigness of God. My friend and one of the former pastors of this church is Tom McKelvey. And Tom and I agree on something. The gospel is not about simply making our lives better. The gospel is about God. And about how we relate to this wonderful, great God whom we love and serve. So those sermons that are based on three ways to be happy or four ways to feel good or five ways to triumph over whatever. Though we try to make them very practical in terms of the life of our church with, through ministry. But really ultimately the gospel, the good news, the Bible, is not about us. It's about God. And who this God is who desperately wants to know us. 
wants a relationship with us, even on this Trinity Sunday. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, one God in three persons, thank you for this privilege of being in worship with these persons virtually. We know that sometimes travel or, or just the, the whole realities of life tumble in. Maybe we feel homebound. And so we do pray today for all who watch and listen, for ourselves, for our church, for our nation, for our world. May we be one out of concern and compassion for those who are most vulnerable. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's do it. I'd like to make one closing comment. We are very blessed at Community Church through your giving. You are generous to us, you're faithful to us. I just want to say thank you and encourage you to continue. I know that the economy and things are difficult. I filled up my car with gas and I had to get a loan from Ted to finish it out. But, and I'm not trying to assign blame or to say, you know, anything other than the fact that thank you for your faithful giving, your generosity to God through the mission and ministry of this church. Please keep it up. May God bless you. Amen.